Today I will give you a short overview about SAP Fiori under SAP S4 HANA. To open Fiori, we navigate to transaction code slash n slash ui2 slash flp. You will get this security message, click on allow. The app will display in your browser. It could be that you need to log on again, so provide your user credentials and click on log on. Afterwards, you are forwarded to the landing page of the Fiori Launchpad. First of all, you can see a bunch of tiles. Those tiles represent apps. And those apps indeed are kind of the same as transaction codes in the ZAP GUI. However, they are more interactive and also one app can comprise one to n GUI transactions. So the whole point of Fiori is that there is a simplification ongoing with regard to business processes and this includes, amongst others, that we do not need to search for transaction codes anymore, but we use applications. You can see that the applications are arranged in a certain way. This is because we can group one up to n of those applications into groups. So for instance, you can see the group periodic activities for purchasing rebates. And there we have a bunch of apps assigned to the group. One app can for sure be assigned to multiple groups if necessary. Also, you can see that some of the apps are displayed here in a kind of quadratic tile, while we have other applications that are a little bit smaller. And this we can actually set in the customizing. So for instance, for our more important applications, we use the bigger resolution. And for other ones, we will use this kind of rectangle over here. We can also navigate through the groups by clicking on the buttons over here. So the different groups will display. Furthermore, over here on the Home tab, we can also see all of the apps that are available for us and navigate to them if needed. To find applications, we can also use the search help over here, which is an intelligent, fuzzy based enterprise search. So first of all, we can filter the search before if needed, or we can just click here in the search help field. And then let's say I want to find this app, create supplier invoice. So I will start typing in create supplier. And you can already see that the system suggests available apps. And here we would have the create supplier invoice app. Before we jump into one of those apps, let me quickly show you something else. On the right hand side, there are important settings that we can maintain. So most importantly, over here, we have the user icon. And there we can see a bunch of different tabs. So first of all, we can see recent activities. So here we can see what we recently have done. In my case, I haven't used this user since a long time, this particular one. So latest I inspected a My Inbox application. And we have frequently used for our frequently used applications. Then we have the app finder. Let's click on this one. Here we can actually also find all of the applications that are available for our user. And what we can actually do is we can, let's say we found an application, this one over here on application group to be precise. And we want this application to be available in our landing page. Then I could just mark it over here with add tile. And then I select a group or groups to which I want this app to be assigned to. I click on close. And now next time we go to the landing page in the respective groups, we will find this application. Let's go back. Then we have a really important tab called settings where we can set settings for our user. So we can adjust, for instance, the appearance, meaning that the theme of our homepage, how it looks like. For instance, I could also select here a high contrast. Right now it's selected to quartz. We have also the Belize theme and so on. I would just simply need to click on this one and refresh the page. Then I have here the display settings with an optimized view for the touch input, meaning that when we work, for instance, with a tablet, then it is advisable to select this one so that the size and spaces of the controls increase for a simpler handling. And we have the automatic dark mode detection to kind of enable a dark mode. 
Then we have the homepage tab where we can select how the content of the homepage is being displayed. So we could say show all content and this you have seen before. So there we can see really all of the applications in the respective groups. Or we could also toggle and say show one group at a time. Let's actually do this and save. You can see what happened. Now I can only see one group at a time and not multiple groups. And I can still for sure navigate through them. Here the advantage is that if you want to showcase something on Fiori, it makes sense to select this view actually. Because otherwise you have seen that a lot of applications and groups are displayed on the homepage and this takes some time to load. So this will impact the performance of our system. So this way here, it's easier for the page to load everything on the fly and for demo sessions, it is advisable to use this feature. Let's go back to settings. Then we have here another tab called spaces and pages. This is not available out of the box, but must be configured. Spaces indeed are another way of structuring our homepage, so to say. So instead of displaying the groups, we can display spaces. And spaces basically comprise so-called pages that comprise groups. So in the end, it's just another way of displaying your homepage and making the content available in a more sophisticated way. But this will be subject to another video. Then we have the use activities where we can track our recent activities and frequently used apps. We have seen the, those two tabs before. Then we have the language and region where we can actually set our default language, the time format, the date format, the time zone and the decimal format. And we have default values. So here we can set default values for a bunch of different parameters. So for instance, I could set here the company code. And once I set it, if I utilize my transactions, the company code will be defaulted by whatever I insert here in the default values. So this is a handy way of increasing the speed of your processes. Then we have the notifications tab where I can enable notifications to be displayed. I will show you this in a minute. And we have the search tab where we can personalize our search to track our search activities and also use a personalized search scope. Let's go back and go to the notifications tab over here. If we have any important notifications, so meaning for instance, let's say there is a pending invoice or an approval must be made, then those notifications would appear over here. Then we have the help button over here. We can click on this one. And here we would find more information about different icons and so on in our system. You can see if I toggle over, there is this line appearing. And then I could click here if I want, for instance, more information about the notifications. And I will get more information. And I can also click on the link and will be forwarded to a help page. There's also the Zap community. And we can also click here on a quick tour to get a quick overview about the Fiori Launchpad. Going back, there's one more indicator over here called built-in support, where we can find even more information about Fiori and as for HANA running on Fiori. Last but not least, it's actually display one app. So let me give you a really good example of why Fiori is such an innovation. Let's actually navigate to the application called Procurement Overview. We are forwarded to the filter page where the mandatory field is the currency. Let's click on go. And after the page is loaded, you can see the real advantage of Fiori. So for this application, which is actually a so-called analytical application, we can see in only one screen, a whole overview about our purchasing processes. And the same can also be done for other modules like finance and so on. And then this is really interactive. So for instance, monitor purchasing contracts, I could click on each of those buttons like this one over here, and I'm forwarded to the other application to inspect my purchasing contracts. So you can see that Fiori is really interactive and fast, and there is no need anymore to insert any kind of GUI transactions, but we can simply navigate to the so-called applications and then navigate forward and back from one application to the other. This marks the end of this overview session. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. And see you next time.